Are you seeing the strength slide? Yeah. Yes, there now. Thank you so much. Um, we had a really, really good set of discussions around um, infrastructure. Um, first thing I want to thank the uh, bro the bro that the project folks who did a great overview of the infrastructure because we know that can take a really long time. Um, there's been great progress and additional comments on that is also the data growth is impressive and the way Anvil enhances usage by reducing time to get access to data. I think Vivian is the one who made the point that if you, you know, if, if a researcher wanted to go out and get access to a whole bunch of these data sets individually, you know, on, an, on original studies, it would take them a really long time. So there's a lot of enhancement from that. Um, the redu reduction of any costs for um, downloading data from Anvil, um, essentially it says egress is free. It's a great benefit to, to the research community. Um, Duos, the, pilot, the Duos pilot um, could be a potential game changer um, for dealing with access controls over who should have access to what for what use. Um, the use of APIs and the GA for GH standards um, is really good as they help with interoperability. Um, also that this project, the systems support both bioinformatics and non-informatics users. So it, it would appeal to a large user community. Um, taking advantage of the infrastructure of the existing cloud vendors is a really positive thing. And we talked quite a lot about security at different levels. And there's clearly been a lot of attention paid to security, security of the access, security of the system, security, appropriate security of the data. Um, participation in NCPI to be part of you know, larger interoperability focus is very good. Um, discussion about FHIR allows usability ability to work with other projects, activities, um, and the some built-in machine learning models, including the ability to have models available, be reused, and have outputs from those models. On the um, weaknesses side, we didn't we didn't have quite as long a list. Um, there was a lot of discussion about clinical research needs, incorporate those needs and expertise across the infrastructure, data exchange, you know, understanding the use cases and um, security and trust by a clinical end user. Um, the portal, while it, it, looks, it looks good, it's, we heard it was redesigned, it could get really busy, you know, the number, as you add components maybe the possibility of doing some um, user interface, user experience analysis, and then related improvements to make it easier to use. Um, there was questions brought up about search, what kinds of search needed to be fast, needed to be accurate to keep up with the expansion of the resource. Um, and more clarity on um, users, outside users, and the provenance of data workflows, components, pieces, you know, in terms of trusting the system, trusting what you would, what kind of um, results you might get from it. Um, more resources, again, toward end user support, comments about people, end users with less experience with using cloud or needing support to onboard to cloud. Um, and then, you know, any concerns about when the, when you have data egress, what does that mean for security of that data um, and security of privacy, especially for any data that allows for identification? On to the next one. All right, um, this is the opportunities. Really, there was a lot of discussion about opportunities, which just demonstrate um, that many people see great potential here. And that's just a credit to all the work the team has done. Um, Duos, again, came up as an opportunity, improve it so it goes beyond the DAX. There was questions also about Duos and silos. Is it NIH wide that Duos is an interest in Duos or not? Um, take advantage of the opportunity, work with groups like Vulcan, to stay in touch with the um, fire, the evolution of the fire standards 
and to um, work on the clinical use cases. Um, there was a comment, it was a really good comment about um, trusting of a resource and the perception of a resource being trusted, whether or not, um, you know, it's not about whether you have the security, it's a perception of can you trust it to cover all the things you need so that you can trust that you're using the data and the results you get, you, know, you, you can count on those. So this was an interesting comment about a perception, you know, like perception of hospital systems and whether or not those are trusted. Um, consider leveraging strides and specifically the professional services portion of it, as well as cloud credits to enable access to a broader research community. Um, plan to use GPO, GPUs or other cost controls, especially as the data grows and the analysis is more complex, you know, be, be prepared that you could use a lot of resources without realizing it and therefore incur a lot of costs. Um, align with GCP and other sources to, again, ease use for participants um, with or without certain experience in the environment they may be joining. Provide more transparency and analyses and linkage with publications. Um, I thought the publications uh, conversation was, was really interesting about ways to also support reproducibility um, and other important items. Um, oh yeah, connection with participants and ability to incorporate the preferences that they state when they make when they do consent for their data to be used. Um, Enhance interoperability, look at um, uh, impact of federated data systems as opposed to the, I mean, there's been a lot of data pulled in, but what you're not gonna necessarily be able to pull in every single very large data set. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I lost my notes there. No, um, that was my problem. I, my um, fault. <laughs> and then there was also a really interesting discussion about, you know, hospital systems, connectivity, maybe having some form of anvil that hospital could link up with their system. So you get that clinical interface without um, that community being concerned that their data is leaving their boundaries. Um, I called it anvil in a box. This was really, I think it was Sandy Aronson. I'm not sure that's exactly what Sandy meant, um, but anyway, it's on the slide. I All right, we've got one more. So go ahead, Sandy, if you want to make a comment. No, I just said I think it's a good description. Thank you. Um, and then finally, threats. Um, one of the interesting things is potential bias in models. Um, we do, you know, we've, and we've heard about uh, the need for diversity. We do know that whatever data you use to train a model, if it's not diverse, it is going to likely have bias in it. Um, there's a reliance on commercial cloud providers here. Um, and I know that for anybody who's interested, Anthony put in the notes that there's a plan to move to Azure in 2022. Um, potential siloing if Duos is not adopted, you know, NIH wide. Um, security threats, not because security hasn't been dealt with well, but because security is an ever evolving area and it is always a threat to any kind of an online resource. Um, reliance on RAS and other identity servers, services, though um, we probably could have put some of the RAS stuff in a strengths area because it's come along, you know, in the past two, three years. Um, potential cost issues, again, how do we control costs and people can still do the work they need to do and no surprises. And then finally, you know, something that comes up on any kind of um, funded project, if it is something um, that has value to go beyond any type of funding cycle, how does one sustain it? Um, would we outgrow this, the model we're using now? Um, I don't know if there's time, but if, if there's anybody who is in the infrastructure group and like to add uh, a note or two, maybe we have time for that. We do have time. One or two comments. Um, 
I'm not seeing anybody. I'm not hearing anybody. So I don't know. Patty, no. you did a great job. Um. <laughs> I had a great group. So thank you to all of you. I really appreciate all the participation. Great. Thank you. Um, so it's time to move on to C. C, that you are online. Great. And thank you. you. I see you. Yeah. How's my microphone? Okay. Good. Great. Uh, thanks for putting up the slides, Chris. Um, so our group was the outreach and training group. Um, it was really good to see that we had a very um, uh, a large diversity of uh, school sizes going from very small to very large. Um, it was also really good to see, um, I made everybody give me their favorite musical groups as their intros from the discussion and uh, some actually really good uh, musical diversity uh, and, and good taste in this group. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, so for our strengths, um, we talked about uh, that there is a low activation energy for, um, for this. I think we're in a time now where this discussion could not have been had even 10 years ago, even at a Hopkins of, you know, well, cloud versus, you know, hardware uh, on-site infrastructure. Um, well, I think we're at that point in, uh, in, in just technology where, you know, that can become a uh, strength, uh, especially for a school that doesn't have this and doesn't, you know, have a huge IT department. Uh, to build infrastructure. So that activation energy was, was a definite strength. Um, uh, a lower barrier for, uh, again, getting this geographic diversity so that these resources are not focused on the coasts and, and the, the major, you know, a large institutions, but, um, you know, uh, everywhere in between, possibly. Um, deep pilots and other forms of direct user engagement, um, that was seen as a strength um, for what was uh, discussed before on the um, uh, research projects coming up. And uh, notably the, the credits for the new users. We spent a lot of time talking about um, the, the finance as a uh, huge barrier, but also uh, some, some opportunities and, and some strengths here. Um, the group noted that the documentation for Anvil is excellent and thorough. Um, it was discussed that um, the online uh, forums have also been very helpful in getting new users and, uh, and, cur and current users um, uh, progressed from entry level to, to mid-level um, on that. And just in general, like the quality of engagement, um, who are going to the meetings, the outreach events, um, just like, like personally from my experience with Anvil outside of the ECC, um, that creation of that uh, GDSCN, the, the community network, um, is, uh, is, is, is doing a lot of um, very useful things for, uh, for, for a lot of folks, um, some of whom are on the call. So for weaknesses, um, it is the uh, activation energy or the learning curve of getting onto this platform uh, versus um, getting on your familiar existing um, uh, platforms or, or infrastructure. Um, one example was, you know, why why to get all the training on Anvil when Galaxy, you can just use the free version of Galaxy and that should solve a decent amount of your needs if you are teaching an undergrad bioinformatics intro course. Um, that was a, a use case for that. Um, another weakness is that the breadth of the tools and the capabilities are um, fragmented uh, for, some of the, for some of the support needs and um, just there's just a lot of stuff in there. And um, that, that could be an, uh, another weakness um, where focusing could be uh, beneficial, or at least a discussion on that focusing could be beneficial. Uh, and, and the major one I think that we discussed quite a bit was the, the costs, whether they were actual or um, more so the perceived unknown costs um, getting into that. So um, I think we would discuss, we did discuss how uh, there is the financial barrier at, at you know, whatever school you're at, um, but the administrative barrier of just getting a way to pay uh, for an, uh, an account. Um, some people don't have, you know, um, school credit cards and, and um, uh, you know, might even have to use some other, you know, uh, way of, of getting an actual account. Um, and that points to like the lack of the free tier um, for users because they have to enter the credit card to get an account and, um, and, and so forth. So, so that, was, um, that, was, that was a major barrier, I think, uh, 
of this. And then it has been, we've discussed this um, in, in many different iterations. Um, another suggestion uh, about a weakness that is uh, solvable is uh, more video documentation versus print. Um, the example uh, that, that um, uh, Saurav gave was how uh, good uh, ingenuity pathways analysis, IPA, which is a Kyogen um, uh, bioinformatics product is very well documented, although that's a premium you know, uh, paid product. Um, but you know, short five minute videos like it used to be on Galaxy um, like, uh, would, would be probably helpful and beneficial. Um, the difficulty in platform integration was noted as another weakness. Um, and more so like the need to uh, have an easier uh, technical entry point for brand new users, notably the ones who are coming from the um, from a new school, from a smaller school, who uh, this is the first exposure to um, genomic data uh, science platforms. Um, another weakness is uh, advertising and getting awareness out. Um, we, again, talked about the GDSN, where it's a fairly large group. I believe there's 30 or so schools involved in that. Um, but that could be something of a uh, a weakness of you know uh, reaching out a little bit more and, and an opportunity um, and and lastly for weaknesses the fear of investing in a dead end utility that was the word um, not not in terms of you know what, whether this will be you know around as a platform five years but if you have a student uh, postdoc undergrad that you were to train on this in your lab what happens the next semester when you know that student has graduated or moved on or, or, um, or, or, or so on. So just continuity of the platform being ported uh, to other institutions or other places. Okay. So that's, that was our weakness. Um, within the weakness comes our opportunities. So um, uh, the ongoing efforts to retrain faculty in data science where Anvil could be extremely um, beneficial and, and useful for that, um, uh, specifically in uh, unique perspectives, needs, and concerns, and constraints of, of new faculty, of uh, old faculty who are being retrained. So um, there are high institutional barriers to using the cloud. Uh, Andal is positioned to provide materials and awareness for researchers to navigate this that was seen as an opportunity. Um, the robust research on how uh, Andal is being discovered and used, um, and to get that information out there could be an opportunity. Um, to normalize cloud computing for the next generation of trainees, uh, as always, uh, the opportunity. Um, research faculty and providing resources to integrate Anvil into the undergraduate coursework, which I know is a major uh, focus of the training section. So that continues to, um, uh, to, to be uh, uh, implemented well. Um, streamlining uh, a, a sign up and billing at various scales was discussed as an opportunity, again, to overcome that um, the hesitation of, of, the, um, of, the, of the credit card sign up. Um, continuing engagement of student users uh, and that leading into uh, how uh, data science workforce development and in particular minority data science training um, can happen uh, with, with the initiatives that, that you've announced uh, on this meeting. Um, another opportunity, sharing course documentation um, for teaching, and uh, finally, opportunities to retrain the current workforce, um, uh, again, to, uh, as we mentioned before. And finally, threats. Um, great. So there are psychological barriers to paying for compute, in addition to the administrative barriers uh, uh, and, and just the technical barriers, um, and, and that's, uh, that is a threat. Um, these would be institutional barriers to cloud computing uh, in general, um, where I think a lot of us are still fighting that fight of, you know, cloud versus hardware um, and, 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 you know, just how to navigate that. Um, lack of an easy and cheap signup for cloud computing could prevent uh, Anvil from becoming uh, widespread in academic settings. And lastly, uh, lack of skill transferability between platforms is a barrier um, to uh, to the investments that are needed. So um, that's where we will uh, we will uh, finish up our spots. Yeah, and 
And thank you to the group. This was a, just an excellent discussion. We ran out of time. See, this is excellent. Um, we do have time for anyone who wants to add anything or ask questions. Yes, great job, Sid, really. This has been excellent reports. Um, I, I know one more, one more Nashville, I get one more Nashville reference. Yeah, usually like, you know, uh, when you see a concert, there's more talent in the audience than there's up on stage. So that's, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say that right now. <laughs> All right. Um, I think this is, um, we all heard very, you know, excellent reports from excellent discussions that took place uh, during the breakout rooms uh, sessions. Uh, I, I want to thank you all for um, really spending time with us. And I, I think we're reaching the last stretch of this meeting and I'm going to hand this off to, to Ken. Thank you, Valentin, and thank you to our rapporteurs and our discussants and attendees for the very thoughtful and informative feedbacks from the SWOT analysis. Um, so can everybody hear me? Yes, we okay, can. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and go over what we're going to do for the closing and summary and closing. So the logistics for the summary is while you've put together your uh, your SWOT, your SWOT analysis, I've been consolidating those listings and I've put them into four separate documents that we're gonna go, that we're gonna review uh, together. Um, because we didn't, I didn't think the strength was something that needed further evaluation. I really pulled out the elements, I mean, the listings from the weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And so, and put them together so that we can actually take a look at them collectively uh, and decide if these are elements, if these are listings that could be addressed by the ANVIL team alone, um, or they should it be done as part of a collaboration. And if so, who, what, who should be potential collaborators? In addition, uh, this is the opportunity for, to collectively look at each of the listings under the different SWOT elements and see, are they in the right place? Should a listing that's in uh, strengths be actually put in maybe a weakness or, I mean, if a listing's in weakness should be put more in an opportunity or a threat. So before I said, does anyone have any questions about what we're gonna do? Okay, well then I will get started and I will first show the, start with the weaknesses and then show my screen here. Okay, can people see my screen? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. yes. Okay, so then what we have here, the first one, the lack of phenotypic harmonization across programs as a weakness. Is this something that should be done by the ANVIL team to be addressed or should there be a collaboration that should be done for this? And I think programs here is across NHGRI programs, if I believe. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Well, just to get to this discussion started, I mean, I think this is going to require buy-in across NHGRI researchers. So Anvil can be part of the discussion, but it has to be broader. Okay. So we'll put it as a collaboration. Okay. And I'm assuming this is in the right, the right element um, as a weakness. Okay. Moving on. Um, Using Anvil is perceived as a challenge because it's cloud-based, make it easier to use and test drive the platform to get an idea of cost. Is this something that should be done as an Anvil alone team effort or should be done as a collaboration? I can. Yes. What is, uh, sorry. Um, you know, one of the things that came up in the outreach section is that uh, some, several of the Anvil platforms don't really support free tier or use, use of the account without a cloud without a credit card, that kind of thing. So to me, that, at least, that, that part at least falls within the Anvil team bucket. Okay. Anyone disagree? No, I, I, I agree completely with that. And I'm, does anyone just think that this should not be under a weakness or should be classified under another element in the SWAT? No, I okay. think it's a weakness. Okay. Next one, lack of understanding on how the cloud, we, how, how the cloud use will cost. And I'm putting, this is what maybe put the third column as far as in the right spot, because it looks like this was coming out of the, uh, out of the, um, uh, the consortium one. And it's like, is this an actual threat? So let me first, let me first reverse this and say, is this in the right element? Or should this be classified as a threat? 
I would vote for um, uh, the reason being that even, uh, you know, most of us may not understand the real costs, uh, you know, in the deeper sense, right? There is superficial sense about user not knowing what the cost will be, but actually, you know, the deeper level cloud provider may hide actual costs. One example is the illusion that bandwidth, you know, data transfer doesn't occur, but it does. So the cloud provider hides that from us and charges egress costs and storage costs to recoup their cost of bandwidth. And as uh, the size of data grows and disk space actually grows, uh, bandwidth will not keep up. Bandwidth will, it will be more and more expensive. So I consider that trend to be a threat uh, at the deeper level, as well as more superficial level, you know, the user not understanding the cost. Yeah. And maybe just in alignment with sort of the, the SWAT processes, um, at least on the in our discussion space, you know, we, some of these threats we framed as opportunities for conversion into opportunities. Um, so even if they begin as a threat, uh, there's an there's the process to convert them into our opportunities. Okay. So the opportunity here, you know, building on Adam's comment is to look at, you know, ways of managing the data that uh, brings the data closer to the consumer. You know, a radical, you know, departure would be, you know, distributed system like uh, so-called interplanetary file system, you know, and Filecoin that actually brings the data to the consumer and really addresses the underlying cost, which is bandwidth, which is gonna be the limiting cost in the long run. But I'm not saying you move to, you know, <laughs> interplanetary file system protocol or Filecon or anything like that. I mean, work with uh, Google for now, but it is going to be an increasing threat going forward. Is this something that the, I'm, I'm, this is this something that the AML team should take on themselves or should this be done as a collaboration? I, my person, I do see this kind of like a collaboration, but I don't want to be the one swaying the well, vote on this one. This is really a deep infrastructure, right? So I think it's an anvil issue, right? Because okay. it's a very deep infrastructure issue. I think it's both, right? There's things we can do yeah. inside of anvil and then there's things we need the support of the, our community and the infrastructure and everything. And I think it also gets at this question of, you know, Anvil being a disadvantage, you know, disadvantage compared to who, because it's the same problem that all the cloud platforms are facing. It's not just unique to Anvil. So collaboration makes sense among the cloud platforms, but, you know, disadvantage relative to on-prem versus, you know, other kind of formats. Okay. So I will put this as a collaboration. Okay. So the next one, um, the one person uses DBGAP in finding data is very difficult. She does pharmacogenomic studies. Show how to use Anvil in very concrete manner. For example, how to identify data sets in specific areas. So there's gonna be several of them that probably fit under this mode, under this heading. This looks like more of, of how to query and search data sets um, and refine those data sets that we have in here. Would the, would, would people see this as an Anvil only effort or is this should be a collaboration? I mean, you can break this up in two different ways, right? There's a specific case of finding data is a challenge. Anvil should definitely have resources for that. But I think everybody that comes up with a use case, like I want to figure out pharmacogenomic data, that has to be a collaboration because it has to be someone coming in with a use case that we'd want to specifically address their concerns if they're not currently done. So okay. yeah, I think there probably is a gap that the Anvil team does need to address because we know some use cases and we can do that, but some of this, we've got to have the help of the community. Okay. Is anyone disagree that this is in the, that this, does anyone think this is not in the right uh, element? Okay. This one, and this is a, a, a weakness or in some cases a threat depending upon which breakout room that you were in. This is related to cost. So managing costs for not just the data coordinating center, but also for all sites. Um, is this something that we consider as a, as a, as a uh, Anvil only effort to resolve or is this really a collaboration?
And there are definitely cost reporting and cost controls within Anvil workspaces that you know have been evolving and are getting better over time. Um, but if we're talking about broad costs across the entire sort of ecosystem of submitters, some of which may not be using Anvil directly to process their data, that's a broader sort of thing. Okay. So I'm looking at the second one after this, and this looks is also another cost one related to. So I'm if everybody's comfortable, I'll, I will actually skip this unless they want to talk about this one in more detail, unless I was off in interpreting that this is similar to the cost. This is in general about cost, at, cost control for Anvil. And, and Ken, you might be able to tag this one. Maybe this is more central to using Anvil workspaces and therefore is kind of Anvil team focused. And the other one is a broader sort of collaboration focused one. Okay. And I'll put that in a note separately. So this is what, the next one will be, what will be the role of Anvil? How will it interact with consortium in the future? Concerns about the role of the data coordinating center going away, this may change the dynamic of competition. Is this considered as a, this is under the weakness heading, do, is this something that Anvil, the Anvil team them, itself can, themselves can address? Or is this something that we really need consortium to help us sort out? I would say this is something- Our collaboration, uh, sorry. Yeah, this is something for, I would say NHGRI and NIH to consider as in terms of, because they are setting up, uh, you know, these consortia, the rules for forming consortia, et cetera. So I would say at least NIH and Anvil, uh, but with advice, maybe an input from existing consortia, right? In terms of checking these policies or guidelines with the existing participants in this ecosystem or stakeholders who may be affected by, by these changes. Okay. So I'm thinking this is as a collaboration since it's more than just the direct animal team to try to find a resolution to. Right, right. Okay, fair enough. And does this feel like this is still belongs under a weakness or is it should be classified as something else? I wouldn't say it's weakness. I mean, it's uh, adjusting to change mm -hmm. uh, in a kind of positive way. I would say this is capturing really opportunity uh, given that Anvil can now provide the economy of scale, robust infrastructure that used to be duplicated uh, Etc. So I would say it's as much as a challenge because of change as as an opportunity because it'll lead to improvements overall. So would others consider all this as an opportunity? Kind of. I'd almost think about it from the threat mindset of if we don't properly handle these relationships, there will be issues. But I think we're, I don't know that we're on the on wrong track per se. Okay. All right, so I will put this as a potential opportunity if it could be to be for if it could be addressed a threat if it's not. Yeah, I think Ken, it actually ties into the one below it, and I think it's a. I think right now both of these are sort of an identifying a yeah. threat to Anvil if it's not in if it if we're not clear on how it's positioned relative to the rest of the community, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, the first is sort of talking specifically about consortia and working with them closely and what how, how does that competition have? And then the one you're on now is talking about sort of outside, you know, again, people coming in and if they're not directly collaborators, what is their role? And so I think the opportunity is to really think about how does Anvil get positioned in the larger genomic ecosystem in a way that really helps, that is clear to everybody and is, is not hindering groups or you know, in a way that has a level playing field. I think that covers both of those two together. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Any other comments about this, about the, this item or this listing? Okay. 
So the next one, do we need to be collaborators of AMBL to get funding? If we're not collaborators, do we have a chance to get funding? Define, defining clearly the parameters of competition. This may impact buy-in from the community, this number team, but it's also a threat if done correctly. I'd like to uh, comment on that again. I think it's a very good observation that both lines share uh, the same feature. But I would say this also points to an even bigger issue, which is positioning Anvil much more clearly, you know, especially saying what is it that Anvil is not doing, right? Right now it looks like it's doing everything. So uh, I would say decisions need to, this needs to be uh, articulated and then communicated consistently. You know, what is the interface between Anvil and the rest of the ecosystem, as Carolyn called it? Uh, right now, it looks like Anvil is everything and we are part of Anvil and <laughs> that's all that there is, right? Because of the lack of clarity about where the boundaries, the interfaces are. So this sounds like, I mean, going back to what Carolyn, you've mentioned, but you mentioned, and also, you know, this is really something that the NH and, and the community needs to work collaboratively on to address. Okay. All right, so the next one, we have developing tools for analysis on open access data sets. Um, is, is this, uh, uh, this more something that the AML team could address or this really should be done in collaborations? And this will probably go the same for the single cell analysis and um, uh, also. So these two could probably go into the same category, actually. So I'll throw, I think this could be done as a collaboration, but I want to know if anybody disagrees with that. I think it's a collaboration as well, Ken. Okay. okay. And um, improvement in documentation related to doc store. Um, yeah, does this also, this, do people have a, think this belongs under the AML team alone to address? Or doesn't think this belongs in AML team alone to address? Sure, Anvil. Yeah. And I believe the hard to find tools and workflows people develop, I think this is an Anvil only, Anvil team effort to, to address. Um, would anyone disagree with that? I would push back. I mean, there are efforts okay. now to develop ontologies of like how, what tools do what and what data types they do what. I mean, there's some community effort. So Anvil okay. can be a part of implementation, but it's collaboration. Okay. Well, fair enough. I mean, I think actually just to add to that, like uh, our tools and workflows being developed by people that aren't part of the Anvil core team. And if, if they are, then it's a much bigger problem than Anvil properly labeling things. It's a community, it's a community okay. challenge. Yeah, and along those lines, I mean, I, I think that that's exactly the point is you want the community developing more tools. Okay. Anyone to have a different opinion or want to add to that? Okay. So I'm gonna put this also for the second one too, tools for interpretation, because we kind of, and um, tools for analysis and data sets. So I, I, I kind of see like these are all under about tools developments and integration. This would be something that we do feel collaborations would be useful. Would anyone disagree with that? Because it looks like that's what we were trying to convey before by maybe mistaken. I agree. Okay. Yeah. All right, mechanism to anonymously log in. Yeah, that's clearly Anvil. Yeah, that's clearly yes. Yeah, the, the only thing is that one's a little problematic. I, I didn't mention it before. I mean, there are good security reasons why you don't want that feature. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not sure that that's, that's a real weakness. I, I think it's a strength, and I don't think we should change it. OK. So Anthony, I just want to be clear. So because um, these are things that. These are just things that, the, the, in this case, this was um, an individual break room session highlighted as a weakness. It's not, it's, we understand that some of these things may not even be possible to do, but it's really just a gauge on what we, what we think, if it, who, if it could be done, 
where should the bulk of that effort reside in as far as how to address it? Which breakout okay. room did this come from, Ken? Uh, this came out of, this would be, let me go back and see. I actually don't remember. Is this outreach and engagement or, or something else? No, it wasn't outreach. It was, actually, I don't remember. Does anyone remember what the, where this came from? It oh, it's actually it was analysis, analysis and tools. tools. I should know that. It was analysis and tools. So, so Ken, I think we should move on from this point, okay. just in the interest of A time. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and I, I think maybe looking at a lot of these on the screen, I'm just wanting, I'm just real looking at the clock and then look, looking at where we are. Um, you know, so just thinking, can... yeah. No, go ahead, Kelly. I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. No, Please just think, I think you can group a lot of these together. Is what I was saying. Yeah. So yeah, if it's all right, I, then we can do that, and then we won't go through every single one of them. So um, I'm going to skip down to the cost. Um, how about this one here? We get down lack of free to need to create accounts before getting hooked on science and capabilities. Um, do this is something that we feel belongs under a collaboration that needs to be done. Or is this something that's within the Anvil team to, to try to address? I think we should try to explore it under Anvil. OK. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, video documentation, I, uh, does anyone think that this doesn't belong under the Anvil? Yeah, that's something we can handle. Yeah. And I would imagine platform integration is a collaboration. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I kind of look at the need for easier entry points for new users to be similar to uh, help them to set up accounts for capabilities. So I'll skip that. Um, I want to actually go to this fear investing in a dead end utility. Could somebody elaborate on that and discuss like how is this something that Anvil could address or as a collaboration it could address? I mean, I think this came up in the context of you know what happens if you know Anvil ends in in two years or in five years. You know, if we're going to try to get people, encourage them to come on, we want to make sure that they're going to be supported for many, many, many years in the future. So that's similar to the sustainability question. Yeah. Right. So this is really something that a collaboration would have to help try to address. Yes. Okay. And so now, and I look at the, the um, needs to better incorporate clinical research needs and expertise. That look at this as someone as, you know, working with collaborators and identifying, kind of like adding tools, getting the community to bring tools and resources in too. Agree. Um, but I will also go down to um, the one that says portals look like it might get busy quickly, UX, UI needs. Yeah. If someone wants to elaborate on that. I think that's Anvil and we're constantly evolving the portal mm -hmm. as new capabilities come online. Okay. And I just kind of look at the need for more resources towards end use support, particularly those with less experience. Now, that's, I think that's something we've already addressed in the following ones. Um, Let me uh, comment about the previous item, which is portals. Mm -hmm. You know, um, customized portals for specific audiences are sometimes built by data coordination centers. And it's not clear, you know, whether or not, you know, Anvil would support extension, say, through APIs. Uh, that are provided by Anvil, you know, building of portals that cater to specific groups. I would say that would be a collaborative effort between Anvil and uh, data coordination centers for consortia. For sure, Alexander, and, and we do support it and we would love to see a lot more of it. And, and not just by data coordination centers, but you can imagine lots of visualization portals and things like that. I think that's a great activity. Okay, so then let me go then here. All right, and as far as the last three, I think in some shape, form, or fashion, we've already covered these in previous ones. If no one, if anyone disagrees, that please speak up now. Okay, then I'm going to save this and move on to the next one, which is going to be opportunities, and I'll quickly run through these also. Like I said, there's a lot of repetition in here also for this one. 
okay? And so um, overall, a lot of these were really about forming collaborations to address um, bringing more data sets in, um, focusing on reducing the barriers for access to the ANVIL platform and to um, find ways to continue to democratize data sets and developing new models. A lot of these opportunities that I saw here were really more focused on consortium and collaborations that were occurring, but there's a few I wanted to point out just to highlight to get some feedback from people to see if I was mistaken in that and just see if we have a general understanding. So um, when we look at the idea of um, um, scrolling down through here, um, um, querying and insert, developing search queries for Anvil, um, which is one that's highlighted here, the ability to do, this was one of the things that was highlighted as an opportunity. Um, in general, do people feel that efforts to improve the querying and search for tools, resources, um, is something that is Anvil, this should be something to be Anvil-led, or is it something that we should be doing as a collaboration? If so, what kind of collaborators should we look for um, to help and re to improve efforts to query and do searches on the Anvil platform? I think it'll be both. It was kind of that earlier discussion. There's work we can do in the Anvil team, but there's also you know, groups um, that are proposing standards in the community. Um, just to where we haven't had discussions about building in the same way that we have a data, a data dashboard, build like a tool dashboard that would kind of you know, summarize and support search and other characteristics across the whole platform. That's not available today, but it's something um, we've been planning towards. Okay. I also agree that it's a it's kind of a collaboration collaboration type of activity with end users. This is this is one of the ways you get your end users to um, engage in helping to improve the resources, make you know getting their feedback on the current capabilities and what would make it better. So definitely collaboration. Okay, and I'm gonna I, so like I said I'm, I, I agree. Okay. Um, and so um, one thing I had here that I thought was interesting is normalizing cloud computing for the next generation. Um, I was wondering if we could elaborate a little on that to identify how best, like how, what, what, what describe more in detail what that means and how Anvil and could do this either by themselves or in collaboration with others. I mean, I, I can speak to some of it, I think, which is just mm -hmm. that in the in the breakout uh, outreach and engagement, um, there was a general sense that there was this this real big activation barrier to just doing anything on the cloud in the cloud, mm -hmm. and that um, the current generation of of bioinformatics researchers were were mostly uh, very content with how they were working and didn't necessarily see the need. And when they did see the need, it was very challenging to to turn to switch over. The what I found really impressive about what Anvil. Um, outreach and engagement was doing was uh, getting the undergraduates to start using Anvil through some of their outreach outreach efforts, and that that means that sort of the next generation of graduate students will have a significant number of cloud natives, so to speak, ready to go, and wondering why they can't gain access to large data sets without downloading them because I could do that on Anvil three years ago. Sort of sort of comments. So that's, that's the opportunity great. that I think we saw here. It's definitely yeah, collaborative, and, though. And if I could just add to that, uh, um, Ken, I think any activity that will expand or extend the, the user footprint will have the impact of normalizing uh, cloud computing to the next generation. A anything you do can that expand the footprint of Anvil use uh, will have that impact. So to me, this sounds like this is something we need to do with collaborations with our colleagues, with, with our colleagues in the extramural community to help us figure out how to make sure we accomplish this. Would anyone disagree with that? I think you're right. Okay. And the last one I wanted to go was sharing course documentation. Um, the reason the Anvil does have the documentation they make available on their portal page, but this was considered as an opportunity. I was wondering, um, if we could allow, discuss this a little more, is there other ways that we that thing that we can develop collaborations to share documentation, or is this really something that the Anvil team could address? And if so, what? How could we address that? I think this is definitely a collaborative. Where you know, yes, we can have materials from Anvil, but as more and more people start using it and embed it in their courses and whatnot, let's you know, let's provide a 
centralized resource where people can add to that. Okay. Anyone disagree with that? Okay. So this, like I said, the majority of the opportunities were collaborate, were things that Anvil team should be doing collaborations on. Does anyone feel after, you know, and I know I kind of skimmed all the way through this, so that there's something that was specific on the opportunities that really uh, is something that's Anvil specific that they want to address now? Okay, then I will move over to the last one. If this thing will let me exit out. And that will be, save that, go to threats. So, well, so I was putting, listing, uh, copying these over and looking at these, uh, the different threats that were out there. Um, a lot of these were some were related towards um, um, adjusting to the cultural shifts to help people um, adapt to the, using cloud resources, understanding the risk associated with um, um, working in the cloud in the cloud environment, um, understanding um, where there are these areas of opportunities to reduce those barriers for, for transferring between platforms. A lot of these came out to me as opportunities that would require us to actually develop collaborations. Um, but there was a few of these that I thought maybe something we could discuss. Um, and so I'd really like to get an understanding on, for example, the, like the reliance on commercial cloud providers. Um, I mean, clearly, I think this is an example of a, con of a collaboration. I've had consortium, it should be collaboration. Sorry about that. But I was wanting to get an understanding more about what people meant by this reliance on cloud providers as a threat. I mean, you could imagine a world where tomorrow Google Cloud, you know, increases costs tenfold or, or whatever, right? So, or, you know, occasionally, I mean, they're quite reliable, but occasionally, you know, data centers go down or go offline. So. Reliance yeah. on any, and any one vendor could be a threat. Carol? And, yeah, Karen can speak to this more. You know, this came um, out of our word. And I'm just laughing, Dave. David just mentioned threat is such a strong word. And someone, we talked about this a little coming into it, but it is the T of SWAT. But Karen can speak to this. But in our group, it came up as a strength, right? We talked about the, it was a working with the cloud providers as a strength and the ability to sort of, build on what they're using. But then as you were, you sort of hit, got to Mike, if you have that, if you build on that and they're outside of your control, it, it like intrinsically becomes a threat, right? Because you're, if they change things radically or things happen with, with Google, then, you know, Anvil is, is there. I don't think, I don't know that it's something that can fully be mitigated. I think we were looking at it more as something that should just be called out if we're calling it a strength to recognize when you have a strength that's reliable, relying on something external, it sometimes just automatically becomes a threat. Yeah, I mean, so. I think there are some technical ways to mitigate the risk. I mean, I do think there is a risk there. And you know, number one at the top of the list is, you know, we are moving into a multi-cloud environment. You know, Anthony mentions the Microsoft Azure platform. We've also, I mean, it's, it's uh, a loose connection today, but you know, in, we do have an opportunity as well to connect to institutional resources. And you know, that's how we provide um, GTEx available egress free today. I, that is something I think that could be expanded in the future as another way to mitigate this potential threat. Okay. Thank you. And so, like I said, no, this is very helpful. Um, so like I said, most of these were things that looked like they were really focused on developing collaborations. Um, is there any one on this list that people want to just single out that they would like to talk more about? That are they feel that they really are things that the Anvil team should just address on their own? Okay, and you also realize there's, there's, there's common things that are actually in all, in all three of them, like the cloud cost, there's both a, a weakness. In some cases, it's an opportunity. And in some cases, it's also considered a threat. So there are some things that, that truly cross different types of uh, SWAT elements. So I'm going to stop here.
And then I'm going to turn this, I'm going to give the, this, this is, go back to my slides. If I can pull it up. And Sorry, my computer just froze for a second, but I think I can do this without my slides. So I wanted to, this concludes our actual uh, workshop. And I want to thank all of you uh, who's come who, for attending. Um, I also want to specifically thank uh, the members of the ECC, um, the members of the ANVIL team that, um, for the hard work that they've done along with our program analysts, um, as well as uh, in our, the, um, our AV support. Um, I'd like to thank 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 them for the hard work and helping make this possible uh, to put this show on um, for our virtual um, uh, virtual format. Um, I also want to uh, thank the communication NHR communications branch for helping us to develop the slides for the presentation. And most of all, I'd like to thank all the attendees. This was uh, this workshop was very useful and very beneficial for us, and it helps us understand what are the um, um, critical things that we need to focus on going forward. In addition, I also want to thank our speaker, Dr. Mr. Vince Bonham, um, for giving the wonderful presentation. Um, and Valentina, is there something you want to add? Oh, one more thing. We also want to say that both the video, the, um, the slides, uh, and the um, um, that were associated with this presentation, uh, this workshop will actually be on our genome.gov website shown here. Um, and again, if I miss anybody, these are our acknowledgements to thank everybody who helped participate in making this Zoom meeting possible. And thank you for your attendance. Yes. Yeah, so is there anything that I missed that you no, want to add? I, I, yeah, I just want to thank everybody uh, once again. Uh, it's been great. And we have a lot of materials to think about and uh, try to prioritize, but it's all good. Uh, so thank you very much. Well, thank you. And we thank got you. you out 15 minutes early. <laughs>